Hello. God bless your mind. I'd like to share with you uh, some revelations. The Creator, our Lord, through His Word, His faithful Word, not my own, showed me me to serve you with. That's my intent. To serve people the bread of life, what the Lord calls His Word. It's the bread of life. And it's found in Him. We as people always try to say, find ourselves. Who are we? Questions like, what are we? Where do we come from? Most people kind of believe that there was a creator. But how many of us have something given in our hearts and in our minds that are basically not satisfied with the words of other people? with the words of other religions or what religions say even Christianity I want to hear something that really hits home if you understand this is this is a word that knows me I'm telling you it's the word of God there's no other place for it to come from. So I'd like to begin with you. At the beginning, in the book of Genesis. Chapter 2. Beginning from verse 18. And at, the, at this point, to this point, God has made Adam. Is a living soul. Eighteen, chapter two, and the Lord God said, "It's not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him." And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found an help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Chapter 3 Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God hath, had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? explain brief an explanation God had set a tree of life in the midst of the garden where they where he put them where he put Adam the Garden of Eden the cradle of life basically the start of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil these are two trees a tree of life and a tree of knowledge of good and evil let's continue and the 
And so the so the serpent, the devil, said to her, he, he observed Eve. And the devil is like a very cunning creature, you know. Uh, he's called Satan. It's basically a Hebrew word, literally, the Hebrew word for an enemy. He's against you. And he's observing. And he does not like the fact because before. Uh, you can, uh, I don't know exactly where in Genesis, but the Lord says we will make Adam, we will make mankind in our own image. The Lord invested a lot in Adam. He didn't hold back much. I mean, he brought the whole world underneath his feet and gave it to him, naming the animals and everything. And when the Lord says we'll make him in, in our image, you can even say that we are made in the image literally like uh, our shape as Christ, you know, the man God, and the spirit of God, the soul, and everything. So we're, we're of great value. The Lord made us something of great value. Serpent saw this as something to take down. Serpent was a disobedient towards God. And anything that is the image of God, man, he hates also get it that's why he does he doesn't he hates the authority of god and he hates anything that looks like god get it you and me we look like god we're made in the image of god that's why he's satan enemy <clears throat> but he was allowed in this place and set his eye on to take down mankind and he knew the Lord commanded them the Lord commanded them take not of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you can take of every tree you know all things are given to you except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil so even the tree of life they would have lived forever with the tree of life with the Lord there And he comes to the woman and he wants to convince the woman to uh, disbelieve God, not to hold God true to his word. What, he, what the Lord says, this is so. He wants to make her doubt and he succeeds. Ye shall not eat, said, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. This is basically still um, the same line many people believe in, is that you'll be as God, judging what is right and what is wrong in your own eyes. So this is coming up, you know, this helped make the point where we are as mankind. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons, basically to cover their parts, okay? because they were ashamed. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. So this is the Lord God himself walking, walking as a man in the garden. 
okay, visiting Adam, bringing the animals to him, conversing with him, having relationship with him. You know, in the cool of the day, you, you, it's awesome that the Lord is basically um, like you know when it's hot, the day is hot and it just cools down. That's that's the sweet spot, really. You know, it's a hot day and it cools down towards the night, the evening. I mean, that's just sweet. And even the Lord recognizes that sweet part in that. And visit comes in the cool of the day. <laughs> so, yeah. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. I'm going to stop there. Look at this. At a certain point, the glorious God, Lord God himself, walking in the garden, okay? This is a, before you doubt or something, it's not to, to bring all the uh, whole conversation up. But this is God himself walking. In the garden so imagine that so it is this being this person and Adam is made in his image and God brings up the animals to him and has conversations and he's naked can you imagine the Lord God himself holy the, the center of the universe face to face with Adam and Adam butt naked and it's all good it's all good talking you know, the grace and the glory just all round. And suddenly, they take of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. And Satan calls it enlightenment. But it's not. Suddenly, the, your the mind of men our minds are detached from God into a place where we more go on our own instinct on our own feelings and on a weak power manpower because we're not fully God God hasn't made us little full gods God has made us mankind a humble a, 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 even a fleshly being and it's kind of like we are given over to the mind not the glory of God held up by the glory of God and his love and his presence and his spirit the Holy Spirit just lifting up everything in the higher spheres of thinking and being that God is but in this lower fleshly minded me little person me smaller than a ox smaller than a lion or to all kinds of things and they're afraid and suddenly they're afraid of the lord god is where one point it was a love and glory to other point is now a terrifying glory because we're given over to their own thinking and disobeyed God. Now, this is not to manipulate, to say, oh, yeah, it's because you disobeyed God. But it is. Let's continue. Thirteen. And the Lord God said unto the woman, 
Okay, this is also very good to understand where it's headed and what we're dealing with as men, as women, as mankind. The, and, and the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this thing, thou art accursed, cursed bo above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly thou shalt go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and, after, and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is a prophetic uh, statement, but we can come to this point. Unto the woman, now the Lord is coming to the point that he's uh, there are consequences to what Adam and Eve did, okay? Begal by, by, by Satan, surely, yes, but there are consequences. And God is basically, if you want to understand what's wrong with us, truly, and in a humble way, I'm going to serve anybody with this truth, okay? I pray, I pray you can absorb this and ask for a humble heart and an open mind because I'm saying I'm telling you it helped me the Lord gave me an open mind and he blessed me with it to understand where I am as a man and it's a blessing to really understand this and to humble yourself towards what the Lord says is as has happened where you come from who you are and where you're headed it's a blessing and these days, everybody, I'm convinced, a lot of us, especially younger people, are getting sick from just all kinds of noise and things that don't fulfill. We want the truth, and nothing but the truth, hopefully. So help us God. Because it sets free. Because it shows you what the thing really is. You can still make decisions in that. To say, oh, I don't know, this way or that way, I'm going to figure this out. You can figure it out. And God is very patient, very merciful. But be open-minded. For the love of your soul, be open-minded. So God is declaring here what, what the consequences of these actions are. And they are in a shape, according to old scripture-like explanation, it's a curse. And it is. It's a curse. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband. And he shall rule over thee. This is the part that Eve gets the explanation. What's what's due to her as a woman. That disobeyed. Notice. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. And thy conception. Some people understand it well God at the curse multiplied the sorrow of conception. It hurts to, to bring forth children. But God makes an extra point. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow shalt thou bring forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Notice that even though Eve, the woman, was made from the man and not the man from the woman the scripture says and there is a certain uh, authority and a certain uh, given thing to adam to be the caretaker also and to to give over his love and serve the wife the the, the word says ye men love your wives you know as christ loved the church and ye women obey your husbands like the church obeys christ which is a good healthy state of being that the Lord commands us to be in but 
notice that Eve was intended to be more like more uh, with her feelings in her mind a sovereign woman her desire went to her husband so a lot of her thoughts and her things and her, her feelings on her joys and her uh, sensations and everything went more over to a that it should be fulfilled with in the presence of a man get it and he shall rule over thee now absolutely they would this was meant to be the Lord meant everything to be the Lord eventually always works according to his good pleasure everything according to his will good will okay he has a plan but to understand and to come to the revelations of this great plan, to come in peace with yourself, not to get confused by scripture, or you think God is just this evil thing or something. You need to be open-minded to understand where you come from. And God, on the cross, died for you to show you, look, I'm not this, I'm not this evil guy somewhere, or to say you're a sinner, this so and so and so, and you know you're not gonna make it, or you need to do this, or you need to do that, or else. No, it's a surrender to your truth. What happened and who you are. These things happen in in uh, in the beginning of the mankind, and God gives it to Moses, and to explain us to us people, and to archive it, and and and, and a lot of the Jews, in in a, in a precious commitful way really kept the scriptures even though they don't follow God everywhere and they were scattered in all kinds of ways uh, you know may peace and shalom be upon them upon us all you know but they preserved the scriptures and it's important so you always can know like what really happened this is the this is the thing this is the thing you hear all kinds of noises but this is the precious word and archived history of God's interaction with mankind and mankind's interaction with God and this is the Lord's word so please hear it so you understand that the, that the woman the sorrow is increased get it and the bringing forth of children in sorrow it's a curse out and it sh this shows that within the, the Adam and Eve being mankind, one, because sure, Eve was meant to be more like sovereign with her feelings and her desires and everything. And this is a curse needed to happen, but this is a curse. Still, we're meant to be mankind. You know, the man will leave his house and become one flesh. We, we become one flesh. Why? Because the, the, the consummation of that marriage, of that coming together, eventually will lead to a child, which is literally the one flesh of two. And, and they will become one. Okay? God has meant mankind to be one. But in the, in the cradle, in the embrace, and in the obedience, and the giving over unto God and staying in His glory and His goodness and His mercy and His truth to walk therein keeps them safe from these things. People are more free. You have people that say, well, Christianity and these religions really oppress women, trying to take them down or something. It's not true. It's not true. At least for, for the true Christian belief. In the embrace of God, in his glory, Eve is free. Adam is free. Get it? In the love of God, you're you're free. But when we stray off, it requires a whole path. There is a path to return. Many times people for centuries try to, by works and by the law, get back to God. And they fail. They fail. There's a savior 
needed to come. Okay. But let's continue. 17. Now unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Let's stop for a minute there. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. It's, 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 it's harsh. I'm going to say that I read this and read it many times. God is mad here. Okay. God is displeased. And all these things meant to happen and God foresaw it. Okay, don't get it twisted. Go, oh, but you know, if he's the Lord, why let it? Why let it happen? You know, it's a plan. It's a plan of salvation. It's a plan of purification. It's a plan of selection. It's a plan of showing people the mercy and the grace of God in the lowest parts. If you, if you just like in a relationship, if you never test your wife or your husband, they they never come into a situation to really show who they are or a, a, one of them comes in a situation where they really, really need to like uh, count on the other person. It might be so that you, you, you don't ever grow that trust or that love, that commitment. The Lord wants to show you he's, he's, he's committed and he wants to show you how good he is. Get it? And not to bring you in a fall, to let you trip and then to pick you up. No, he wants to show you that he's God and that he knows what's best for you get it and that's very important the lord uh, many people uh trip over the part where well you know if he's sovereign you know why is this misery in the world and everything and it's because each and every one of us has this trait in us you know in uh, even if, even when you're young People say, well, why are there wars and sufferings? And it's, I'm like, well, even if you're young, when you're young, why do you choose certain friends over other friends? You know, like well, this is an innocent example, but you choose certain people over other people. Why is it fair? Everybody's made in the image of God. Everybody has feelings. You, you know, it's in us. God made us with free choice. Now you heard that before, free choice, okay. It's also the devil even even angels were made with free choice okay certain angels straight away they straight away of the path of god they even become disobedient satan is one good example of that now it's meant to be god is is using him it's meant to be you know and he lets it so it might help people to from a from utter darkness to see god's good light you know and to be Basically, when you get pulled away by your own lusts and your own ways, you might come to the grace of God that, that he shows you, look, I'm here for you, despite everything, despite the, 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 the disobedience, the hatred, the denial, the, the whatever you've been part of, I'm here for you, get it? And I died for you, basically, okay? It's a very important part that the Lord... Uh, went on the cross for us the Lord God Lord God in the garden walked yeah Lord God walked onto the cross okay and he, he went up died for us and took the punishment the curse 
the Lord God dropped this curse and he but he took it also like the word says by one man Adam sin and death came into the world and the word and the word does say sin and death came into the world because of the sin otherwise they was uh, and they were uh, but it's we, we, we're coming we're coming to the point where it, uh, we'll explain that we'll, 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 we'll uh, read on now but it's it's you know it's important that you understand that God wants to show you that he is a faithful God and he's faithful to his creation yeah and he wants to give everybody the opportunity uh, intensely enough to stray away so you might see his goodness get it that the devil does not come again and say oh really is God so good no because you'll you'll be in that dark place and you know God is good he'll embrace you back as his lost son as his lost daughter and you'll feel his love and you'll feel his goodness and you will know he's good he's intense he's very intense but he's also that same intense is even more good and and loving get it and that's what you need to open up to but let's continue for dust thou art and unto dust thou shalt return and Adam called his wife called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothed them the Lord clothed them and the Lord God said behold the man has become as one of us to know good and evil and now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken so he drove out the man and placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned away to, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life behold you become as one of us basically the Lord is trying to make uh, come across this you would say well you know as, a, as an unbeliever uh, okay you would say well you know see the Lord yeah what Satan says God just didn't want us to be as one of as, as him but we were as him get it he made his, us in his image blessed us loved us talked with us walked with us in the garden bringing the animals to us we can name it can you just imagine it it's like a like a father uh, the son uh, coming in at the end of the day or something uh, or from school or whatever and having done all kinds of things and the, and the father is just like interest whatever you know what have you done today and what do you name that animal what, wow indeed yeah you know that, that does look like a rhino it's a good word rhino yeah <laughs> and uh, just just this awesome interaction you, you I can only imagine it's beautiful it's like a son and he was the son and the word does say that Adam is the son of God was a son of God Get it? even Jesus is named like the first Adam we, we were made in his image Get it? And when he says, look, the, he's become as one of us. Let's be honest. Okay. In knowing good and evil. We see things. We know things. Some people see less. Some people see more. And there's a difference between seeing eternal life and just earthly things. That you see a lot of earthly, uh, even some spiritual things. But 
seeing the truth of life in Christ. That's a different story, okay? That's the sheer grace of God that has to do that in your heart. But now we know these things. We know good and evil. How are you doing? What is it doing for you? You like it? I know I didn't. Did not bring me to a good place, knowing good and evil. Not anywhere good. But we are what? We know good and evil, right? Just pick out good, and it'll be good. No. You need, your mind needs to be, and your heart needs to be in something higher than yourself. Okay. When you make perspective, when people, when, when an army, not to bring in war things, comparisons, but when you need to check out an, an, a place, a plane or something, you get a high ground. Take up that high ground. There, it doesn't go any higher than the throne of God and his mind and his heart towards us, okay? Towards everything that is good under heaven. The higher you go, the fresher the air to breathe. Now, we have this death and this sin in us. We have our own rebellious way in us. And the Lord cannot permit for them to stay there and to eat of the tree of life and live forever. You'll just have this mankind infested with darkness and rebellion towards themselves. People think, Maybe you think, well, you know, he should have just maybe left us alone or something. Or, or heal us instantly or something. Or, you know, just manifest the, the restart something or whatever. No, but God is faithful to his creation. You know, if you have a son that went, goes astray, you don't immediately like, well, then we'll make a new son. Rawr. Thank you, John. Try to commit. Try. The Lord doesn't try. He does commit. Okay? He's faithful. He's waiting. And he's committed all the way. There's no greater love that a man has for a friend than, than he that gives his life for that friend. That's what the scripture says. God still remembers you, his Adam, his butt-naked Adam, naming the animals, his Eve, lovely as she is, roaming in the garden, enjoying everything that is. Sin and death came into the world, okay? The sorrow is increased and everything. God pro proclaims it as curses, but it's just what God proclaims is just an establishment of the law of nature. Get it? What God says is uh, it isn't like nature and us and some things of God. No, what God is and says, nature and all creation bows down to and is, He orders it and it does according to His will. Forget science and all kinds of things okay he orders nature okay his word is true they 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 put these other knowledges just to confuse you and disorient you and put your mind off the truth that sets free in christ the lord god grace walking grace walks as a man
For he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out man and placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Bless the Lord that this is no longer so. There is not an intense, cherubims are intense beings, okay? Angels, the word angel comes from being a messenger of God, okay? Then you have archangels, these are warrior angels. Cherubims, horribly to say, even Satan was, was a cherubim. Cherubims are intense flaming creatures. It means it's intense. And this flaming sword is his word. As many a times in scripture, his word is like a sword piercing the soul. You know. And and, and the word searches the intents of the heart, of your heart. God is God is with his grace gives you the ability and he shows by his word and he opens up your inner parts as, as David says deep and secret places therein he shall show me wisdom the Lord promised from the beginning when he said enmity I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is a prophetic promise. I can't really go into how exactly to explain it, but it relates to Jesus coming. And dividing his people from the rebellious, and bringing back his own home and dividing them from the rest not to say that the rest are all the seed of Satan it isn't exactly uh, I don't know exactly how to interpret it for people to interpret it, but people are free to believe on the gospel of Christ God is so powerful God is the people always limit like say well you have a certain few or you need to be chosen. And certainly God already foresees who, who will come home to him. Okay, God is powerful. God is the living God himself the, that sustains everything, upholds everything. Our lives, every being, everything. He's powerful. And his name is powerful. And the name on which he really approaches us, given, is Jesus, Yeshua. Yah Mashiach, the Messiah, the Christ. The Christ, the Messiah, means the leader, the anointed one, the one that will reconcile and lead us in the way of God. And throughout of all, throughout it all. People say, well, why is God allowing all these things and everything? And sometimes I think, oh, that's a simple childlike question. But it's a good question. God loves his, God invested so much in Adam and Eve that they are very intelligent beings. He didn't make them as the animals. Okay, some say we are even more free to think than the angels so in, in a certain way, in creative ways, in expression, in realization, in, in, in envisioning, in feeling, in love. In some way, they're, they're higher than the angels, more than the angels. Okay, don't get it twisted, the angels are very intelligent. Okay, <clears throat> but 
it does have a part in the word does say in the New Testament that don't you know be gentle unto each other and you know and to work righteousness and all these things for do you know this is the part do you know ye know ye not that you will judge angels some even will be so refined by the love of God and in a relationship with God that, that you'll come at a point where even Adam will judge angels situations So God has invested something very special in us, except when it goes away from God, it's just a horrible thing. We're just more intelligent to do evil or more intelligent to hurt ourselves in our own mind and stay in these vicious cycles. And it only, you can only set your, not yourself free, but the grace of God will set you free by coming free from yourself to surrender or else you'll just be constantly in a vicious cycle with yourself and your, and your emotions and what you think and your doubts and your nakedness your nakedness suddenly you're naked everywhere it's like when you walk in the street you know you have times where you feel Confident and things are going well, and then you, you can you can look people better in the eyes, and you say hello more, and you know, and, and you're confident. And then other times, you're like ah, so and or and you just walk somewhere, and not, people not even looking at you or caring about you or whatever, and you feel this reproach. You feel like oh, what is you know so, and you don't feel comfortable. And you, what do people I don't know. Not to say that you really be, really think what people think of you, but you know these things. And this is this exactly. Full glory, full in the image of God. A, a a being that is made in the image of God at the point, at the place, in the presence of the Lord, doesn't have that. Doesn't have that. Uh, oh, okay, what does this uh, owl in the tree there? Ooh, think of me. Oh, oh I, I feel uh, I feel little belittled in my mind. No. It's the fallen nature is away from God. It's away from His love and His care and His protection over you. That's why he sent his only son to, he came, <clears throat> he could have, he could, he could have come as a mighty king, which he was, but in secret, he could have came, come as a mighty king out of heaven, just fire and just hit what the Lord says. I don't, you know, I can just call now a legion of angels from the father and destroy everybody here. The Lord wants them when he when they put them on the cross to suffer for us he could have just had in his mind and the, the, destroy the place and the whole place would just detonate in plasma <clears throat> and fire he didn't he said Lord forgive them for they do not know what they do Father, forgive them. They do not know what they do. <clears throat> he came. <clears throat> Sorry. I, he came as a man. To show us the way. To redeem us. To take on that curse. On him, take it on the cross and go into death. And because he's God himself, death could not hold him. Death is uh, death came over him. It was like a word, death. Rawr, we're gonna pull you down. You're dead. You're away from God, not life. Rawr. And God is like, whoa, you can't do that. I'm God. And death is like, ah, oh, the light. The light! Just to be funny. But it's intense. Mm -hmm. Death could not hold him. Because he's life. Get it? Death is not above life. Get it? That's beneath. And he shows the way. He shows the way unto re to be reconciled with God. Me as a Christian... What is my ministry? 
the word says my ministry is the reconciliation with God to reconcile people with God I'm reconciled with God I'm in the ministry of Christ he reconciled the world unto him and everything in it in that they believe on the Son of God and he shows the way he lived with us suffered with us cried and laughed and ate with people no more people okay I'll bet beautiful people with all kinds of issues everybody you can read you'll find your issues there everything is in the Bible you can find everything in the Bible trust me you'll find everything just open up and believe what's in it believe it. it's important that you believe it and know that everything that speaks against it is a lie it's important that you believe it or else it just it's just letters in a book but when you believe it the spirit of truth comes and works in your soul and shows you the truth unto life that springs up into the spring of everlasting life you drink from it freely and your your soul will, re, will regain its its vitality its life in God and you'll see and you'll hear and bit by bit God is faithful and patient and he will work with you with your issues but the way was clear he showed this is the state of the being of Adam that he that the Lord God came as the son of man from the seed of Adam because the Lord can do that people are like how can the Lord be the son and, and Jesus is, and everything it's like, the Lord can do anything please he can make mankind but he can't become mankind showed the suffering and took the suffering with him and in him he conquered suffering and death it's like a it's like he came down from heaven he says I am from above year from below that's what the Lord says I am from above year from below it's like he came down and just built the stairs and the stairs is at his cross like dying to yourself dying to what you think you need to be in this world dying to what people said to you that you are dying to yourself I'm yours you give over and you get on that cross you get through that cross and you and it's from there it's slowly and surely an upwards step towards heaven towards the truth setting you free now I don't want to make it a beautiful poetic picture because it's you know let's go through the details one day with what happened on that cross it's intense okay it's a torturous thing life could be a torturous thing okay but it's a horrible thing when life is a torturous or difficult or weariness and it's as the Lord says he that hath uh, you know uh, tired and heavy laden you know come find your rest in me I'll, uh, you know I'll give you rest come to me I'll give you rest the Lord says he that are tired and heavy laden I think <laughs> can't come up with really well the verse now but that's what it is ye that are heavy laden that have labored and are heavy laden come to me and I shall give you rest and that's what it is that's what I'm experiencing I'm telling you 10 years now uh, in the faith and he's really faithful and he really handles my issues and he really lets me grow lets me see and he's faithful and patient and he's there feeling you surrender and you believe you surrender and you believe 
Not to manipulate you, but I'm just saying what I'm experiencing, really. If you surrender, and you believe, and you understand this, look, I was cursed and because a rebellion of God, and I've been astray. I've been going in my own thinking, and it hasn't done anything good to me. Lord, have mercy on my soul. I am an enemy and I am rebellious to you and I need your help or father take me back in your loving arms and in Jesus Yeshua's name the Son of God who, who won the opening of heaven again who opened heaven again because of the sacrifice you gave Lord the way you gave to surrender to to be reconciled unto you that the curse may come and is overwhelmed by Christ and I am dead in him and back alive in you Lord in the spirit because the Lord also says this and it's important for everybody Christians and everybody coming to the faith is the Lord says at a certain point these people are why can't you understand my speech the Lord says at this point and is it yeah, what, is it because you can't understand my speech? These things I tell you are spirit. The flesh profiteth nothing, the Lord says. The flesh profiteth nothing. There are a lot of things about your life. What I, what I just said, you know, it's the cross. is dying for these things. But your soul is precious unto the Lord. And this is not the true life. A lot of misery and things when you could say why why is this allowed to happen a part of it is because this is not the true life the true wonderful life is to be experienced with God in eternity okay you I mean if you, let's put on a scale 80 years here with all the testing and all the things and all the issues or eternity in a unimaginable not made by human hands heaven of God and there are glimpses in revelations and everything it's wonderful and who he is and together with him in all eternity no suffering no anything that is not good what is the true life God wants you to come there that's the true life the true life is in to be uh, to come unto true life in Christ and to be eventually in true life in heaven with God when Shiloh comes it's not here right now people preaching all kinds of things promising all kinds of things and parents wishing all the best for their children and all kinds of beautiful issues and we want we want we want I still want things absolutely but we should want Christ because he preserves you from this world the Lord is clear the Lord is clear he said my kingdom is not of this kingdom of this earth okay it's a different kingdom it's coming you know our hope is in that kingdom to come to preserve you from this world this world is not headed anywhere good it's it's written the Lord says it is written in his word and it will come now you might as an unbeliever find it difficult to believe when I'm you know it's like everything in the Bible everything but you'll get there hopefully I pray in Jesus name you understand it's about your soul and it's not per se about the flesh or your experiences in the flesh and all your things yeah, the Lord is also good for that and he, and he and he cares about us and our lives even even to the, our persons he's a real lover of the soul and that's where it counts okay that your soul is loved by the true living loving God that's where it counts that's where you feel that you can pull through this life that's where you feel like uh, it's worth you know it is a <laughs> every day is a good day for the Lord had made it, made it, and He loves me in it. Get it? You really, and it's not to to give this loving, poetic uh, 
vision about it or something. You know, it is it is a faithful relationship with a person. Get it? If you understand uh, what God made man and woman to be, if you understand what God made the the father made the son. You know, you have a father and you have a son. The loving care that even is in that in the fallen state, we still see how precious it, precious it is. Imagine the father, the God that thought that up, that made fatherhood and sonhood, you know, to be a son and that relationship, that made the man and the woman that relationship. Where it comes from, imagine how beautiful the potential of a relationship with the source of that is and how much God wants that. He, he puts those, if a dad, if a father longs to hold his son again, you know, you can imagine you, if, if the earthly family, earthly man with his son, you, you quickly understand. It's like, oh yeah, man, he misses his son and everything. And he's misses, missing his children or, you know, his wife or whatever. And just imagine God the source of those feelings, you know, and God is content in himself, he's full, he's a being that doesn't need the one, but he wants relationship, and he's committed all the way, faithful all the way, all we need is to open up, open up, I'm telling you, I experience it out of my own experience. But he blessed me to open up. And he's a lover of my soul. And the keeper of my being. And he's faithful and he's true. And the more you stay in him, the more he shows his faithfulness and his actual trueness. By the word given. And you'll just find time after time, Lord, yes, and the confirmation things in your life and around you, and your belief will grow. But belief doesn't just cascade, so whoop, it's put on you like a mountain, and just like suddenly, okay, I, I believe. It's it's a it's a process. And God, bit by bit, in surrender, and you'll come at the place where you worship Him and love Him. I want to sing songs and oh Lord oh. and when the point comes when you feel the spirit <laughs> bless your holy relationship bless your soul bless your temple for you are in the presence and you are filled with the Holy Spirit with the Lord God himself the Father in heaven through the Son in Christ by the spirit spirit of the truth love you all